All right, let's do a test connection. First of all, you can see I have turned off my Wi-Fi and have connected to Ethernet myself. Let me go ahead and check the network options. You can see here it says USB simply because I have a USB-C to Ethernet port connected to my computer that is connected by Ethernet to my modem. Now let's make a connection. If you look down here, uh, I have put six different IP addresses um, of servers that are running at Stanford University's Karma, which is the Center for Computer Research in Music and Acoustics. And you can picture literally six computers there, six Linux machines running with a Jacktrip server. And we can now connect to them for testing purposes and just connect to those IP addresses here. You can see the first one is what we're going to start with. Um, this is the IPv4 IP address and it's running a server with 48,000 hertz uh, sample rate and 1,024 FPP frames per period, which we talked about is the buffer size. So I want you to do what I'm doing, open the terminal um, and open, of course, QJack control. So as you can see, my server has already started, but I'm gonna hit stop here, go into the setup Remember, we're connecting to, let me show this. We're connecting to, first of all, a server with the biggest frames per period, the biggest buffer size, just to make sure we can get a connection. And then we can lower our buffer sizes to see if we can reduce the latency and see if our internet is fast enough to deal with it. Because again, we want to have the lowest buffer size possible in the end. So looking at my... Uh, set up here you can see I have already correctly set my frames per period to 1024 and sample rate to 48 kilohertz. Remember we want to connect to a server as a client with the same sample rate and the same frames per period. So I'm going to hit OK or cancel because that's already what I've selected. I'm going to hit start. Now what we're going to do is we're going to type in jacktrip but this time not dash V. We're going to say dash capital C which means we're a client. And in fact, we're a client in the server hub mode. The server is not a peer-to-peer -peer connection. It's running in a hub server connection, which means we have to type in the capital C um, because multiple people can join, right? That's just how Jack, uh, Jacktrip distinguishes between the peer-to-peer -peer connection and the hub server connection. If it were a peer-to-peer -peer connection, we would say lowercase c but for now capital c and now we hit space again and we'll type in the ip address of that server that's how jacktrip works so i'm just going to say copy this for you it's 171.64.197.165 and what i'm going to do additionally is i'm going to say space dash n1 telling jacktrip that i'm going to connect with only one channel now, I believe you can just leave that out and not type in the dash n1, which would be the same thing because one channel is the default setup. So I'm going to hit enter and we'll see what happens. It says receive connection from peer, which is great. So that means that it worked. Um, let me put on my headphones and just see if I can hear myself back. And you should be able to do the same thing. So I am actually hearing myself on my left uh, headphone output. Um, now, going to QJack control and hitting the connect button, you can see that indeed what happened is not only do I see my system audio, but it looks like it has automatically connected to this IP address that we've uh, put in here, right? So it looks like Jacktrip has now that it's run on top of QJack control, which we ran in the background, remember? QJack control starts the Jack Demon, the, the Jack audio driver that is running in the background of our machine and we have then additionally connected to the jacktrip server and it also popped up in our qjack controls connection window so again when we click on this we can see that we are currently sending as you can see it's done some default settings here how about i disconnect all and we just do this from the very beginning so my capture one right let's say i uh do not want to send it directly to my headphones, so I'm not going to have a sort of direct monitoring of my own. But I'm going to send my microphone, my Capture One, to Jacktrip. And now if I listen, I should not be able to hear anything because, as you can see, I'm still not receiving anything, right? This is the receive from the server to my machine. 
Um, in fact, I am not hearing anything. So what I'll have to do is connect my receive one to my system playback one. And now I can hear myself with a weird latency on my left channel. So I am sending my microphone capture one to Jack Trip and I am receiving from Jack Trip. I'm assuming that it's just mono, right? So I'm not expecting something to be sent on the second channel of that server. But I am taking my receive one and sending it to my system playback one and two, which means I can hear what's coming from Jack Trip to my left and my right ear. So I'm basically making that one channel that I'm receiving and put it on both sides of my headphones. So it's kind of a fake stereo if you want. It's, it's essentially mono. Let's take a look at the Jack Trip terminal here on the left. What does it say? Um, it tried to connect, as you can see, this is our command that we typed in here, if you remember. Okay, that is the IP address we want to connect to. Setting Jack process callback. Success. That seems great. The sample rate confirms that we've set 48,000. Um, audio buffer size is 1,024, as we have set, which seems to be 4,096 bytes. Okay. The number of channels is two, which I'm assuming the server was started with two channels, which is fine for us. Maybe they were expecting us to even send stereo, right? We could have said, we'll send our left input to send one and our right input from our interface to send two. And then other people could also take our left channel that we send and say, my left channel goes to my left ear and my right channel that comes back from the server goes to my right ear. But for now, we just said, we'll send mono, right? We'll send capture one to send one, and we'll just receive probably that one channel that is you know, active on the server and send it to both of our ears. All right, what else did it tell me in the terminal here? It said using UDP protocol. We like that. Uh, UDP is the protocol with which we send the data off to the server, and it has certain advantages over TCP, which I'll cover in a different video. Uh, also, it had a certain port under which it connected, which we can also leave out for now. Uh, what is important to us is this line, receive connection from peer, and it seems to be working too. So that feedback is very important. Now, what are those lines that are occasionally popping up as I'm staying connected? Well, the server gives me feedback if one of my audio packets has not arrived in time on the other side. So imagine my internet connection is not as stable for a moment. Um, my audio packet might not reach the server in time. The server will give me feedback and say, well, I've waited more than 30 milliseconds to get your packet and uh, it still hasn't come through. So I'm at least going to send you a quick note that your internet connection is not perfect. But you know, for, for our purposes, this is fantastic. And again, if I put on my headphones, I can just hear that I am hearing myself pretty uninterruptedly speaking. So that's great. All right, that was our first connection. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna abort this jack trip connection by hitting Control C on my keyboard. If you remember that um, stops any current processes. So now I can, if I hit enter, for example, I can see I'm getting all those, um, I can basically input new commands. It's just waiting for me to input new commands again. So I'm also gonna stop QJack Control um, Jack server. If I hit stop here, remember you have to stop the server every time you set up a new frame buffer size. Um, so I'm going to go to setup here now that it's stopped. And I'm going to say, okay, let's go for the next server, right? Which we lower now our buffer size to only 512 samples, hoping that the packet will get there faster. So I'm going to say frames per period, 512, and hit OK. I'm going to start my audio server again. And I'm going to look at this IP address and copy the new one right now because we're actually connecting to a different server. I'm going to open my terminal again and say jacktrip dash capital C and then the IP address. And as soon as I hit enter, you can see it in fact did say receive connection from peer. So it looks like it's working. Let's test. One, two, one, two. Yes, I can hear myself. Why am I hearing myself only on the left side? Let's open up those arrows here and see. Okay, so it's again done this automatic connection that I'm not really a fan of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say disconnect all. Yes. And I, what, what do I want to do here? I only want to send my microphone input number one again to the first channel of the Jacktrip server. 
uh, where everyone hopefully sends their audio to. And then I want to get my receive channel and send it to my left headphones and my right headphones, right? Okay, now let's test this out again. I am hearing myself on both sides. That is fantastic. Okay, I want to show you something. Uh, if your connection does not work, then that is a possible error. So I just hit Control C again to stop the Jack Trip connection. And I will go and stop the Jack server as well and go back and set up. Now let's say we had forgotten to set our frames per period to 512 and we still had 1024 selected. So I'm going to hit OK now. And I'm going to say Start. And I would still connect to that same IP address that ran the, you know, 512 buffer size server, right? Um, so I'm going to type in again jacktrip-c to connect to the, the one I previously connected to. just want to give you a quick tip. If you hit your up arrow key on the keyboard, you can actually uh, see the last, the previously executed command right here. So that makes it easier for me. I'm still going to connect to that one. And now... Hitting enter, it tells me receive connection from peer, but jack trip process processes stopped. Why did it stop? Well, it actually gives me information right here. So take a good look at the terminal all the time. Here it says peer buffer size is 512, while my local buffer size is 1024. So it does not connect. Sample rate and buffer size have to match. Okay, lastly, I want you, so I'm going to hit again control C. Actually, it, it already exited, right? So I'm going to stop the server, and I want you to choose the different frames per period sizes. Maybe go down to 256, test that out, 128. Get a little bit of, you know, routine um, for yourself. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose the lowest one, 32 frames per period. I'm going to say, okay. So, so the, the latency for that packet to kind of be put together will only be two milliseconds before it'll put out. So that's a really low latency. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, I'm going to hit Start. And now let's see, what was the lowest one here? 32. OK, this is the IP address. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to my terminal. I'm going to hit the arrow up key to get this. So I don't have to type jacktrip-c anymore. And now just copy my new IP address in there and hit Enter. And it seemed to have connected. I'm not getting any waiting 30 milliseconds dropout messages, which is good. So let's hear. One, two, one, two. Wow, okay. So I'm hearing myself again only on the left side right now, but I'm hearing my own voice with pretty much no latency. I'm hearing it basically in real time. And what's incredible is that this audio has been sent to Stanford all the way from Berkeley. That is about a one hour drive, think about it. And it's reached that server and it's immediately kind of reflected off of that server to back to me. And it's made all the way back here to Berkeley. And it's a very low latency and this would indeed allow me to uh, make music in real time with friends. Now, if you have a musical collaborator or friend, uh, that person could also join and you would most probably hear that person on the server if everything works out. Um, keep in mind to not please practice on those servers, to not use them for actual music making, um, but only testing purposes. So um, if you were successful at uh, lowering your buffer size and making a connection that still sounds relatively good, right? Mine sounds pretty good because I'm relatively close to the server. My internet connection is relatively stable, um, but I'm do I am hearing some dropouts from time to time. I, I, I'm hearing some connection issues, but you know what? That wouldn't really keep me from making music. To me, it's more important that overall it's fast and quick and I'm hearing everything in real time. And then if you know an audio packet doesn't get there in time and I'm hearing some sort of weird noise for a millisecond or two, that's fine. I can, I can take it as a musician. Um, okay, so I want you to start experimenting, lowering your buffer size, see which server you can join and if the latency is good enough for you. And once that works, you can go ahead and continue with me in the next session where I will teach you how to set up your own peer-to-peer -peer server so you're not connecting to a hub server as we did now that was already set up, but you are going to be the server or your friend is going to be the server and you're going to be his or her client, right? All right, so happy experimenting. I'll leave this here for you for another two seconds so you can pause the video, 
go low with your buffer settings as low as you can and um, I'll see you in the next video where I'll teach you how to set up your own peer-to-peer -peer connection and you don't need an additional server being already set up it's just between you and a different person so see you there